The Grifters. The tracking is quite a while now. I'm the only one who can bring you in. know that this whole thing is going to end with you in handcuffs. The Grifters. Why are there so many songs about rainbows and what's on the other I'm side? And the craziest bitch in the target Rainbows are visions, but only poisonings to horrific murders. There are empty chairs tonight at kitchen tables just like this one because of President Biden's senseless border policies. Serena, she was trying to read the fucking Bible. Just said like about Lincoln Riley. How are you going to keep her safe? In my neighboring state of Georgia, this What are you going to do? Are you going to lock her up here like a board guest? That was uh, kind of in a reverse position as Miss Britt was doing it. And just look at the director's face. Uh, he knows the Golden Globe Award is going nowhere near them. President Biden's border policies oh my goodness. are a disgrace. This crisis is disgraceful. So and the truth is, it is stupid. almost entirely preventable. And then sudden <laughs> smile. From less act natural to poison the humans. If you've ever had any acting or drama coaches, one of the things they teach you is pronunciation and elocution. And you warm the voice over going, ma, 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 ah, 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 ah. Or in uh, Katie, uh, <laughs> I'm going to get the rain right every one day, uh, Katie Shit's case, uh, it is ba 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 Biden, ba ba no, no. You can imagine in a drama class, she's going ba 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 Katie, give me more B, B from the backside, as if you're doing any Trump bullshit. Ba, ba, ba. Enough is enough. We know that President Biden's failures don't stop there. Well, President Biden, and unfortunately, President Biden's weakness, the president has demonstrated. President Biden has failed. And what does President Biden do? The free world deserves better than a dithering and diminished leader. I've actually worked out what really went on. Let's be serious for a while. Uh, Katie Britt literally went on chat GPT and said, give me somebody who has the same initials as me uh, on how I can do a delivery which will get my message over. I never could have imagined what my story would entail. To think about what the American dream can do. Trump and I have a very different value set of Anunnabis already. Mine is based on core values of the defined America. And the rest of the world looks at us that way. Decency, honesty, fairness, equality. But we all know Donald Trump sees a different America. An American story of resentment, revenge, and retribution. That's not me, that's not you. Can I say something which, in my opinion, has nothing to do with politics? That's called common decency. Uh, I understand in political terms people feel it's okay to try and make uh, capital by saying something about someone's sexuality, uh, their religion, uh, and their skin color. You kind of, it's what comes out of uh, Trump's mouth. But I have to say that I am, was shocked, really, really shocked. This is just plain nasty, plain horrible. Um, 
anything with regards to how we are is not affected by your political choice. It really isn't. Uh, the fact that Trump sees it as fair game to mock President Biden's data is just, it's just horrible because I'm quite confident that there are people who support uh, Trump, who support the Republican cause, who may have a stutter. It's just the way it is. Sometimes different humans have different things about them. Sorry to sound so deep. And, and then the other thing is Marjorie Taylor Greene, I won't use the word is vile, but the whole the Riley family, I just feel so sorry for them because they've lost their daughter. And as I said, for her, this is just an opportunity to talk rubbish. No other way. Using death, using a family who are grieving, using it as a political football. She doesn't care about the person. They don't. And like bragging, she told President Biden the wrong name and she, she actually got the name wrong. But nobody says anything. It's kind of the double standard. It's all a joke. You'll have commentators on Fox, oh, it's all a joke. Imagine if that was your family. Somebody you know. There has to be. What actually happened to decency? It can't be that every, This is me. This is my opinion, okay? I'm an outsider looking in. It can't be that common decency doesn't mean anything anymore, that respect doesn't mean anything anymore, that if somebody is, I don't know, if they're in a wheelchair or whatever they have that uh, Trump sees them as different, it can't be accepted that we think, yeah, let's mock them, let's laugh at them. I mean, they were the same people who were upset when Hillary Clinton said stuff about deplorables. Yet here we are, uh, let's have a joke at somebody, because they look and sound a little bit physically different to Trump, or Marjorie Taylor Greene, or Lauren Bobert, or Matt Gates, or Jim Jordan. State of the race. We are joined by Dr. Lauren Wright, a political scientist and lecturer at Princeton. Lauren, thanks so much for joining us. And let's jump right in here. I do want to get your reaction to what we just heard from Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, tonight. Even Trump uh, tonight criticizing Biden for mispronouncing Lake and Riley's name. And then we hear the Congresswoman uh, speaking to us, also mispronouncing Lake and Riley's name at one point during that soundbite. Uh, no, we've all been questioning his mental capacity. And he had this pen in his hand. I had given it to him as he walked down the aisle and when I yelled out at him and I said say her name Lincoln Riley he picked up the pen and he had it right there it's easy to read Lakin but he said Lincoln Riley uh, but the most important thing is clear that Biden did what he needed to do last night to unify his party they were all singing his praises last night. You got the pundits on television uh, that are now rallying behind Biden. The Republicans better get it together. To you about something. I've been hearing a term in the last few days that is new to me. Uh, double haters. I want to put up a poll. I have to say I, I like this. Uh, it, it fits the campaign perfectly. In a New York Times poll, 19 percent were described as double haters because they disapprove of both Biden and Trump. And Biden is currently leading among the double haters, 45 percent to 33 percent. So, Sarah, are the double haters a real thing and who's going to end up winning the double haters? So I conduct focus groups all the time and the double haters are absolutely a real thing. In fact, because we have this phenomenon here where you essentially have two incumbents running against each other, the persuadable chunk of voters is different this time. It is people who have they, they know both these guys and they don't like either. And so. That's why this is going to be a really negative campaign, because persuadable voters, to bring them over, you're going to have to make them hate the other guy more. The phrase that we hear in focus groups all the time, and if it was a drinking game, we'd all be dead, is the phrase lesser of two evils. Uh, and what they mean is I'm basically to make my decision on who I hate slightly less. And Biden usually cleans up on that front because people hate Trump a little bit more. <laughs> OK, <laughs> that's that's his claim to fame. They hate me less. America. There you go. <laughs> It's a bumper sticker. Kathy Griffin, for okay. a long time. 
I'm sure what she'll is, be attacking you my know, hair. As you've mentioned, you've met Don Blas. That's okay. You were on the show. Ladies uh, and gentlemen, Kathy Griffin. Or, Come I on up, Kathy. Yeah. Yeah. I was on, yes, I was on. I was part of challenges for the Celebrity Apprentice um, twice. One is part of a challenge for my dear departed friend, Joan Rivers. And um, then, yeah, one was as the civilian apprentice when Liza was the headliner and I was the host of an event. Uh, I did spend an afternoon with the Donald and Liza Minnelli. Oh. And let me tell you, I don't know what Liza was on, but I should have been on that too. <laughs> with love, I say that with love. But yes, well, he whatever has, it takes. The so Donald has a distinct smell that doesn't really get enough press. It's like body odor with kind of like a scented makeup products but you can smell the hair products. Even yep. okay. Now we have to go. Come right this way. We're okay. straight, out. Straight, out. straight out. Straight out. Straight out. All right. Straight out. Got your teeth probably burn over here. You're looking good, man. Oh, so are you. So are you're you. You're looking huh? good. You always look like you have I don't know who you're having. I, I told you, let, let's go shopping. I'd like to. Yeah. So this is Lindy. Uh, also, hey. Team Clyburn. Yeah. yeah Lindy. How are you? Good to see you again. I, I work for Jim, too. <laughs> Lindy, Lena, Lena. <laughs> Lena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good yeah, yeah, yeah. to work for here. Oh, oh God, look, look at him. White butt, white butt. Mr. President, it's great to see you again. Thank you Good for to doing see you. this. So that was one hell of a speech you gave Thursday night. I'm going to touch on three specific areas there. The first one being, you know, I noticed the look of surprise on your face when you walked into the chamber and you saw Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. Um, it was priceless. You feigned shock at, at seeing her. But during your response to her heckling of you, you used the word illegal when talking about the man who allegedly killed um, uh, Lake and Riley. An undocumented person. And I shouldn't have used illegal. I should have, it's undocumented. And look, when I spoke about the difference between Trump and me, one of the things I talked about on the border was that his, the way he talks about vermin, the way he talks about these people polluting the blood. I talked about what I'm not going to do, what I won't do. I'm not going to treat any, any, any of these people with disrespect. Look, they built the country. The reason our economy is growing. We have to control the border and, and more orderly flow, but I, I don't share his view at all. Can I say something which, in my opinion, has nothing to do with politics? That's called common decency. Uh, I understand in political terms people feel it's okay to try and make uh, capital by saying something about someone's sexuality, uh, their religion, uh, and their skin color. You kind of, it's what comes out of uh, Trump's mouth. But I have to say that I am, was shocked, really, really shocked. This is just plain, nasty plain horrible um anything with regards how we are is not affected by your political choice it really isn't uh the fact that trump sees it as fair game to mock president biden data it's just it's just horrible because i'm quite confident that there are people who support uh trump who support the republican cause who may have a stutter it's just the way it is. Sometimes different humans have different things about them. Sorry to sound so deep. And, and then the other thing is Marjorie Taylor Greene. I won't use the word is vile, but the whole the Riley family I just feel so sorry for them because they've lost their daughter. And as I said, for her, this is just an opportunity to talk rubbish. No other way. Using death using a family who are grieving, using it as a political football. She doesn't care about the person. They don't. And like bragging, she told President Biden the wrong name and she, she actually got the name wrong. But nobody says anything. It's kind of the double standard. It's all a joke. You'll have commentators on Fox, oh, it's all a joke. Imagine if that was your family. Somebody you know. There has to be. What actually happened to decency? It can't be that every... This is me. This is my opinion, okay? I'm an outsider looking in. It can't be that common decency doesn't mean anything anymore, that respect doesn't mean anything anymore, that if somebody is, I don't know, if they're in a wheelchair or whatever they have that uh, Trump sees them as different, it can't be accepted that we think, yeah, let's mock them. 
Let's laugh at them. I mean, they were the same people who were upset when Hillary Clinton said stuff about deplorables. Yet here we are. Uh, let's have a joke at somebody because they look and sound a little bit physically different to Trump or Marjorie Taylor Greene or Lauren Bobert or Matt Gates or Jim Jordan. I'm going to bring the country to, 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 together. I'm going to bring it together. I'm going to bring the country to, 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 together. I'm going to bring it together. Written by a nice reporter. Now the poor guy, you got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Uh, I don't remember. He's going like, I don't remember. I, oh, maybe that's what I said. This is 14 years ago. He still, they didn't do a retraction. That reporter he is talking about is Serge Kovaleski, who now works for the New York Times. As you can see right there, he suffers from a chronic condition that impairs movement of his arms. A Times spokesman says they find it outrageous that Trump would ridicule the man's appearance. Our citizens and the conquest of our country. They're conquering our country. These people are conquering our country. They're horrible people. You know, we... I'm not unpopular. I'm at 92 or 94 percent in the Republican Party. Ronald Reagan was at 86 percent. It's fake news. These are fake news people. Is that right, Marjorie? And I use his name and said, and I say, our president, Barack Hussein Obama, meaning who's calling the shots? Does everyone sort of understand it? They, the fake news says, he doesn't know the name of our president. He doesn't know it's Joe Biden. He must be cognitively impaired. I'm not cognitively. And you know what? When I am, you're going to know it. You're going to be the first people. I know my people. You'll say, all right, Trump, you did a good job. Get the hell out of here. That's it. That's it. Crazy. So I have to be very careful. I can't be sarcastic. Can't be fun. You can't mix names. Purposely mix names. You know, purposely. In the State of the Union this week, it should be 100% of the black people should vote for Trump because I did more for black people than any president other than Abraham Lincoln. It's true. It's true. I did more than any president other than Abraham Lincoln. Think of it, criminal. I'd love to come over and make amends. You know, I've always felt you were the best candidate. I think you're fantastic. You know, people that were with the Sanctimonious, they were with other people. Well, I'm not going to use that name anymore. It's not respectful. Let's call them Ronda Sanctus. People, people, sometimes it's not good to be rich. I just posted a $91 million bond, $91 million, on a fake story, totally made up story. Think of it, $91 million. I could say things about what it would cost normally, 91 million, based on false accusations made about me by a woman that I knew nothing about, didn't know, never heard of, I know nothing about her. She wrote a book, she said things, and when I denied it, I said, it's so crazy, it's false. I got sued for defamation. That's where it starts. That's why they're weaponizing law enforcement for high-level election interference against Joe Biden's top and only political appointment, a guy named me. It's a guy named me. Pundits and inside sources say that the attacks on me will be violent. They say that it's violent. Uh, the attacks, Biden said it. He said, you know what their whole plan is? It was just released the other day. No, it, didn't, it was leaked by one of them. They raided my house in Florida, Mar-a-Lago. They raided with no ra They had no reason to do so. They violated revenge. They said, I'm out for revenge. I'm not out for revenge. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. All compliments of an incompetent. Oh, wait, this is my son, Braden. Hey, we're Braden, how are you, man? We're here because he's still here, so we wanted to hear you speak. Oh, man, come on. Hey, I tell you what, it, don't let it define you. You are smart as hell. Now, you really are. You can do that. Can I get a phone number for you, and I can tell you how what I used to do and how I would do it? 
Can you take us from because there's about 25 stutterers I continue to work with. And I can tell you the things that help help me. I know, by the way, the hardest thing is talking on the telephone. So I don't expect you to be able to. But when I stuttered, I used to talk talk like 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 this. And it took a lot of practice, but I promise you. I promise you, you can do it. I promise you. And don't let it define you. You're handsome. You're smart. You're a good guy. I really mean it. Don't let it define you. And you know when I say I know about bullies, you know about bullies. The kids who make fun, it's going to change, honey. I promise you. Look, I'm not a young guy. That's no secret. But here's the deal. I understand how to get things done for the American people. I led the country through the COVID crisis. Today, we have the strongest economy in the world. I passed a law that lowers prescription drug prices. Caps insulin are $35 a month for seniors. For four years, Donald Trump tried to pass an infrastructure law, and he failed. I got it done. Now we're rebuilding America. I passed the biggest law in history to combat climate change because our future depends on it. Donald Trump took away the freedom of women to choose. I'm determined to make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again. Donald Trump believes the job of the president is to take care of Donald Trump. I believe the job of the president is to fight for you, the American people, and that's what I'm doing. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Can we do one more take? Look, I'm very young, energetic, and handsome. What the hell am I doing this for? I'm going to bring the country to, 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 together. I'm going to bring it together. I'm going to bring the country to, 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 together. I'm going to bring it together. Written by a nice reporter. Now the poor guy, you got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Uh, I don't remember. He's going like, I don't remember. I, oh, maybe that's what I said. This is 14 years ago. He still, they didn't do a retraction. That reporter he is talking about is Serge Kovaleski, who now works for the New York Times. As you can see right there, he suffers from a chronic condition that impairs movement of his arms. A Times spokesman says they find it outrageous that Trump would ridicule the man's appearance. By the way, I have to tell you that, you know, I've done it twice. We did great the first time, 2016. We did much better the second time, like not even close. And it was rigged. It was rigged. But there is never, because the migrants are hurting people, they talk about the beautiful dream of migrants. It sounds so nice, you know, like in a fairy tale book. But some of these people are monsters, a big percentage of them. If you go to El I'm going to bring the country to, 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 uh, together. I'm going to bring it together. Nation, we have become a nation like nobody thought possible. In many cases, we have become quite honestly, a horrible and unfair nation. And I use his name and said, and I say, our president, Barack Hussein Obama, meaning who's calling the shots? Does everyone sort of understand it? They, the fake news says, he doesn't know the name of our president. He doesn't know it's Joe Biden. He must be cognitively impaired. I'm not cognitively. And you know what? When I am, you're going to know it. You're going to be the first people. I know my people. You'll say, all right, Trump, you did a good job. Get the hell out of here. That's it. That's it. I mean, the good thing about his uh, speech, if you want to call his rant the other night, he probably did well enough that he's not going to be replaced on the ballot because they were talking about replacing him. And I said, you know, he got through it barely. But he got through it. I think he's possibly going to make it. Nobody thought he was. I, I sort of didn't think. I guess maybe I still don't think. I mean, when that's the best that a party can do, we're in big trouble. And, you know, they always talk about, it's so interesting. I watch these uh, criminals back there, the press. Look at them. Look at how many of them. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Wow. Uh, I always say they should endorse me because I'm the best thing that ever happened to their ratings. They should endorse me. That Joe Biden went on television and apologized for calling Lakin's murderer an illegal. He didn't want to call him illegal. He apologized. He said he should have called him an undocumented, not an illegal. And he wanted to apologize.
He wanted to apologize. And, well, they have a new name, too. They have a new name that's even worse. They have a new name. You know what the new name is? Neighbor. They want to call him Neighbor. They want to call him another name. Did you ever hear the other one? Newcomer. A newcomer to our country. Are we, are we going crazy or what? Is this country going crazy? How about that one? Newcomer. The newcomer. No, he was illegal. And I say he was an illegal alien. He was an illegal immigrant. He was an illegal migrant. And he shouldn't have been in our country. And he never would have been under the Trump policy. There's no tying up. But here's the problem. Uh, the bad guys will take over that pier and they'll take every ounce of food and everything else and then they'll sell it to people that have no money and that it was intended for. We have the stupidest people in the history of our country running things. These are stupid. These are stupid people. Twice. We did great the first time, 2016. We did much better the second time, like not even close. And it was rigged. It was rigged. By far the most disgraceful part of Joe Biden's disservice is the divisive and angry speech. Which from the beginning it worked, and then I got on television, and they asked me that horrible, horrible question, you remember? And I said, oh, my dad, that's the first question I ever got. Megyn Kelly, may she rest in peace. <laughs> She's sort of making a career by pretending she likes me. And then... And then, so what happened is she asked me that horrible question about women. Women love me. You know, I protect women. I protected, I protect. But uh, it was an amazing phenomenon, and, and I do protect women. Look, they talk about suburban housewives. I believe I'm doing well. You know, the polls are all rigged. Of course, lately they have been rigged because I'm winning by so much, I always say. It, disregard that statement. The suburban, they always say suburban housewives. They want something that's very important, security. They don't want illegal immigrants coming into our country. They don't want illegal immigrants knocking on their front door and saying, I'm going to use... The Grifters, the Tractors Corp. I'm the only one who can bring you in. know that this whole thing is going to end with you in handcuffs. The Grifters.